Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Omar Cummins with FC Cincinnati and the FC Cincinnati Foundation. Our next reader and community leader is Dr. Janet Reed. She is the founder and CEO of BRBS World LLC, which works with companies including FC Cincinnati, developing and retaining world-class leaders who value diversity and inclusion. Dr. Reed is graduate of Howard University with a BS in chemistry and a PhD in bioorganic chemistry. Here is Dr. Janet Reed reading Coretta Scott by Ento Zake Shange. Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Janet Reed and today I'm going to read a book called Coretta Scott and this book is written by Intuzaki Shange, and it's illustrated by Kadir Nelson. So usually you start a book from the front, but I'm going to start this book from the back. I'm gonna start with the last page to give some perspective on Coretta Scott King. Now, some of you might already know Coretta Scott King. She was a civil rights activist and along with her husband, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they are responsible for many in the United States having freedoms that they would not have had. So starting from the back of the book, Coretta Scott King was born on April 27, 1927. And as a child, Coretta and her brother and sister, some of you may have brothers and sisters, walked five miles to the nearest school for Negroes. Negroes was the term used at that time for black people. The bus carrying white children would pass them each morning on the way to the white school. This division of the races is called segregation. And many states enforced segregation through what was called Jim Crow laws. Growing up in a family of deep faith Coretta often sang in church. She had a beautiful, soaring voice. At Antioch College, Coretta became interested in the idea of civil rights, or the fair treatment of all people, black and white, as American citizens. She later went on to Boston University to study concert singing because of her beautiful voice. In Boston, Coretta met a theology student named Martin Luther King Jr., who was also interested in civil rights. They were soon married. Martin introduced Coretta to the writings of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was from India, and he believed that nonviolence is the true path to liberation for an oppressed people. One afternoon in Montgomery, Alabama, a black seamstress named do you know her name? Rosa Parks. Refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white man. Rosa Parks was arrested and the South was never the same. Martin organized the Montgomery bus boycott and awakened the whole nation to the injustices of segregation. Coretta and Martin were committed to nonviolent resistance. The hallmark of their teamwork was the March on Washington, which was in 1963. They wanted to show the world that America was not the place it claimed to be, that everyone was not in fact free. Together, Coretta and Martin raised a family and worked tirelessly to further their vision. Coretta used her musical talents in a series of acclaimed freedom concerts that told the story of civil rights in the United States and also raised money for the civil rights movement. In 1964 and 65, Congress voted to approve laws that would make segregation illegal and enable black people to vote. On April 4th, 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee to support striking sanitation workers. Dr. King was on his motel balcony when a shot rang out. News of his assassination hit the streets and cities all over the country went up in flames. Coretta was steadfast despite the violence. She left their four children in Atlanta and led the 
the sanitation workers in a march. Until her death on January 30th, 2006, Mrs. King spent her days speaking out for racial and economic justice and helping to build the King Center, a living memorial that provides programs to educate people about the philosophies of nonviolence. Her courage and vision are an inspiration to all. So let's learn more about her and let's look at the beautiful pictures in this book. Coretta Scott by Ntuzaki Shange, paintings by Kadir Nelson. Some summer mornings, the moon sits like an orange sliver by the treetops. Coretta and her siblings walked all of five miles to the nearest colored school in the darkness with the dew dampening their feet. See them walking to school? White school bus left a funnel of dust on their faces, but songs and birds of all colors and rich soil where slaves fought freedom, sought freedom, I'm sorry, steadied them in the face of danger. They kept going even though times were hard. Over years, learning and freedom took hold of Coretta's soul till she knew in her being that the good Lord intended freedom for the Negro. Martin Luther King Jr., a young preacher, prayed for freedom. Coretta prayed, two minds attracted in prayer. Yes, they could do something among the many who thought moral power would overturn Jim Crow. They prayed together, found joy, and were married. According to Gandhi, the humility of millions could free more than just one people, it could free the world. And the world for Coretta and Martin was the South. And they went to Montgomery to their new parish. There they are in church. And the Montgomery bus boycott, just the beginning of a long journey. Here's the bus boycott. Black people refused to ride the bus. More boycotts and sit-ins for many, many Negro students felt bound to do something. There were hundreds and thousands left behind. Negroes in shacks and cotton fields, living in fear for their lives while they dreamed about the North. Hundreds, then thousands, white and black, marched in Alabama, Carolina, Georgia, and Chicago, marching for justice, nonviolent marching. A quarter of a million at the March on Washington, peacefully singing, We Shall Overcome, and listening to the words that would inspire a nation. See the lots and lots and lots of people in Washington, D.C., in front of the Washington Monument. Things nature never intended a child to see haunted them. Tragedy accompanies growth, no matter who we are, and the Negroes are no different. But fervor for the coming vote and equality pushed Coretta to a peace and wonderment of the Lord. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me round. That's an old song about not giving up. That's what that song's about. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, walking up to freedom land. More words on that song singing, 
always singing. Remember, Mrs. King had a beautiful voice, and there she is with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I hope this book has inspired you to think about standing for things that really badger. Thank you.